that's another episode of the Brett Allen show. And today we it's we're we're coming up on 400 episodes of the audio version and uh, we have a very special guest. I'm very excited about this. Uh we are chatting with musician and actor Tommy Howell. We have a lot to discuss. Uh thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Yes. Well, let's jump right in here because um, you have a lot going on. Uh, you have a debut single, Rose Hill, uh, that's coming out this month, and you're going to be doing a live stream performance of it on the tenth. Let's talk about the new music and what people can sort of expect. Well, you know, uh, it, it, it's it's it was all sort of an organic process, to be honest with you. Uh, right when COVID hit, oh, almost two years ago. Um, I had this thought to to do a film about a former country western singer that was sort of the J.D. Salinger of of country western music. He he put out an album that was a great piece and was real popular. And he kind of walked away from the business to go, you know, be a cowboy on a ranch and train horses. And and I grew up a cowboy. My father rode bulls for twelve years for a living professionally, and then he became a stunt man, which led to the film business for me. But uh, riding horses and rodeoing and, and growing up in that rural background was, was, you know, who I was. And, and I could do that still. And I still ride horses and, and compete occasionally with, uh, with friends of mine. But the music side was, was foreign. And I, you know, was raised in a musicless home. Nobody really played a lot of music, nor did my folks really listen to a lot of music. So I, I, just on a sort of a whim, I, I grabbed a guitar when things started to shut down and I started playing every day and discovered I had a little knack for writing some songs. And and um, it just one step after another, I was led to Nashville where I'm, I now have my own band and I live there full time and I'm, I have my first album coming out and... Yes. Uh, my very first single called Rose Hill that is uh, we're going to debut this Saturday on a live stream um, where you can find a ticket at TommyHowellMusic.com. And uh, we're going to take Q&A afterwards and maybe play another song or two. And uh, it's it, Rose Hill is a beautiful place down in Macon, Georgia. It's a cemetery where the Allman Brothers are buried and. Um, Butch Trucks is there and Barry Oakley is there and Otis Redding is also buried there as well, coincidentally. And, and um, I went there and the irony really struck me, Brett, that this is a place where they used to go when they were, you know, alive and kicking and they wrote great songs like Little Martha, you know, instrumentals like Elizabeth Reed. And it's a place where they all hung out and did their thing whatever drank beer and smoked weed and wrote songs <laughs> and, and and threw rocks at trains going by and when i was there it really affected me and i and i i went to their home which is now a museum and there's a lot of incredible artifacts there to check out and you know organs and different instruments and that old gold top that Dwayne used to play is there and we got to take it out of the case and covet that a little bit and so when i left it it really stayed with me. And uh, I guess people are calling it a tribute song. I I don't I don't really call it that. I didn't set out to write a tribute to the Almonds. I love them and I, I have so much respect for Dickie Betts and you know their kids today. I just think, you know, uh, the trucks and bets team are just incredible and yeah. and I'm a big fan of the whole family. So the song sort of poured out of me and um, it, it, I didn't anticipate it being sort of my first single or anything. And I put a pretty good team together and everybody seemed to like it. So we're going to yeah. go with it and we're going to see what happens. It's fantastic. And it needs to be mentioned too, that it's being produced by Dean Miller, the son of country legend, Roger Miller. So, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, everything that you could possibly have amazing going on with it, it it's checked off all the boxes. <laughs> I appreciate Dean has been a great influence on, on me and, um, you know, confidant and a real sort of 
comfort provider, being able to look through the glass and see him there. And he's got great ideas. And, um, you know, he produced my whole album. And there's a couple songs I'm really proud of that the work that he did is phenomenal. <clears throat> and um, I'm, it's, it's just sort of, it's so new to me, to be honest with you, because I've spent a lifetime playing other roles and yeah. tending to be other people. And to really be on stage and share a part of myself um, is, is new for me and a, and a beautiful thing. And a, 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 one of the things I love the most is sharing some of the stories about some of the films I've been in in the past. And we talk about things like, you know, E.T. and The Outsiders or Red Dawn or Criminal Minds or, or even the show I'm doing now for Netflix called Obliterated, which is a new comedy that's uh, written and produced and created by the producers of Cobra Kai. And um, we're doing the first season right now. And, and that's been phenomenal. So I've just been really blessed. And, and, and uh, trying to balance the two has been a little bit tricky. But somehow the music side of it is, has given me an outlet to, uh, to embrace the acting in, in a much more refreshed uh, I'd say perspective. I appreciate it more, and I think I'm a better actor from it. So it all works hand in hand. Yeah. So it's very fascinating because I'm 48. So I grew up watching every single one of those movies uh, that you mentioned. Red Dawn, particularly, I remember. Um, yeah, The Hitcher. I think was another one that you did. Uh, yeah. Or rest is soul. What? A, what? A, another great actor and. You know, having grown up in that in that time, right? Like I, I, I did a movie with Elizabeth Taylor called The Young Tuscanini, where I spent a year of my life over in Italy, and about seven months of it was with her. And I did a movie with Anne Margaret and and another great Kelly Preston, rest her soul, um, called Tiger's Tale. And you know, I I was able to just get a little piece of of what was left of old Hollywood. Yeah. And Times have changed now, and I feel really grateful for that because it was special back then. When you were in a project, there was it was a red carpet event. It was it was important, and now so many projects are made and they just come and go, and some don't get released, and some do, and some are quote unquote straight to video and blah blah blah. And everybody has an iPhone now, and everybody's a filmmaker now. So it's a it's yeah a very, yeah very I, different. World. I love your perspective on that. It's true. I mean, I was talking to jake Busey a couple years ago when this whole thing started and he said something very similar you know he's like you know he was like the studio that you're in right now when i started or when my dad was in the industry would have cost you know thousands upon thousands of dollars to even come up with you know to do something even remotely close to this um and now you know you have an iphone you're on an iphone we now pocket right it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's great for you to be part of an era that, you know, perhaps maybe a slow well, we, way a little bit. Then, you know, I think I think one of one of the tragedies of having every answer in the world in your pocket is that you you don't appreciate communication anymore. You know, I I used to really respect and revere finding an answer to something. You know, you you, you either had the encyclopedia that you needed, you know, I need that M for Mexico because I'm doing that, I'm doing that report. And if you didn't have it, it was the end of the world, you know? So uh, there was something about, about searching and locating and communicating and, and doing the work. It, we've removed all that now. Everybody's just got the answers. Nobody's got the path to the answer anymore. And I don't know, there was something it's so cliche, but there is something to be said about the journey. You know what I mean? It's it's to me um, the relationships and and the connections that I'm making musically um, have been incredible. And there's a real difference between Nashville and Hollywood. And and not that one's better than the other, but they both are awesome in their own way. Um, there's certain things that I don't agree with with both sides. Uh, probably more with Hollywood than Nashville. But <laughs> okay, I, probably. I, I I honestly have found a home in Nashville with people that I didn't really anticipate um, 
perhaps having, you know, I, to be honest, look, I'm just, I'm just Tommy. I'm just myself. I sort of forget about my own history. I forget that I've been doing this since I was, you know, 10, 11 years old and that people may have seen ET or the outsiders or grown up with a certain part of me. And, and it's funny when I meet people my age now, in particularly women who were fans of the book or watched the film when they were 13 years old, I meet a 13 year old part of them in that moment and there's there's an innocence to that that i absolutely love you know a lot of people ask me how i feel about still being you know connected to the outsiders and people tell me to stay gold every day and and my father calls me pony boy my lord so you know it it it's a part of my life and that poem's a part of my life um the Robert Frost poem, Nothing Gold Can Stay, has really stuck with me my whole life. And what that means and, and, and um, the definitions of those words and, and, and you know, it's really in, a simple, in the simplest terms, it's a poem that's about the circle of life. But within that, there's some great metaphors and a really simple piece of literature that have grown with me as I've grown. And I wrote a song um based on an old lullaby called pony boy that was written in 1908 called pony girl and um i incorporate the poem in in into my show so it's a big part of my life the outsiders and yeah that message and 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 carrying that torch because so many people have fallen in love with reading because of that book I've, I've been given, you know, I, I can't tell you how many stay gold tattoos I've seen in my life. Um, the amount of mail and messages that I've received from people saying things like I read this to my mother as she was passing away on her deathbed, or I watched this movie over and over with my father until he passed away. And it was, you know, it brought us so much. And those, it, it for whatever reason, that project has meant a lot to so many people. And, uh, to have been a part of that and to have grown up in front of really the world, really, it's it's strange because you can see me as a 13-year-old kid in E.T., 14, 15 in The Outsiders to, to an old man today. You know, it's just, uh, uh, I feel blessed to have that, uh, that sort of documentation and one day I won't be around and people will, will be able to access that and there's something cool about it. And now on top of that, I got a little audio to supply with the music thing that's a little cherry on top and there was no expectations i really have nothing to lose so <clears throat> excuse me it everything's been a gift with with the music for me because um i literally just started out with it and i'm really i'm really proud of the journey and the people that i've met and the people that have embraced me and have allowed me to grow and um, it's happened kind of fast. And, and we're really, really, for me personally, uh, I've had a lot of, you know, triumphs and some successes uh, starting very young, you know, especially with the outsiders. But like I said, um, I'm not really relying on anybody else with this one. I don't have other producers that have done the ground, other writers that have written it, other directors that are directing it. I, I if you like it, it's my fault. If you hate it, it's my fault on this one. So, you know, I think we're a pretty good live band and we tell some stories and we share parts of my life in Hollywood and parts of my life. And, you know, growing up with uh, the, the type of father I grew up with and um, being sort of from a cowboy background, the rural background is something I used to shy away from publicly and not really like to expose it too much. And, you know, I realized once I embraced that, I became a better artist and I, I, I grew some roots of authenticity that I was lacking in my personal life as an artist. And um, I think it's just kind of made me a better person all the way around. Yeah. I mean, I, I have heard multiple interviews that you've done and I have watched your career, you know, from, from the beginning. And I know there, there was a time where you didn't do a lot of press or publicity and, yeah. The C part, you know, you dropped that fairly early on and, and, uh, you know, people would ask you about that. So I think it's very cool, uh, on so many levels that now you've got music, you know, it's like a time capsule of your life. You know, those movies, especially now with social media and in fact, I just took my eight year old to see ET for the first time. At, at the, what's that? 
In the theater, probably. Drive-in. We saw it at the drive-in. And, uh, you know, that's the first time I saw it was at a drive-in, probably around his age. One last question here. Um, you've, you've said this already a little bit, but when you do these shows and people come see you, um, what is, like, the demographic like? Do you get people who are perhaps my age that grew up watching you? <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I think that is changing when because people haven't been exposed to my music yet and we definitely have a particular sound and a particular direction that we're heading which is kind of a you know we've got a little bit of that texas thump you know we're sort of a southern rock vibe but we also pull back and we can play some bluegrass and we got you know harmonicas and and mandolins going so it's a it's a it's a real jam and um, I get anywhere from young teenagers to, to, to people in their 60s and 70s that have sort of, you know, there's a lot of people that are fans of Criminal Minds, you know, Brett, that are in, they're a little bit older and, and not everybody really identifies with me as the guy from the outsiders or Red Dawn, which ironically or, you know, strangely, um, I'm always sort of surprised or shocked where somebody might have connected with me and how they 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 have done that yeah. and and it's not it's definitely not all the same so uh when somebody shows up to my show and here's what i love the most about it a lot of a lot of gentlemen will will bring their wives maybe their daughters to the show because they're fans of the outsiders but the people who end up leaving asking where can I buy your music is their daddies or their husbands. Yeah. That that's been the greatest gift of all. Not that I care more about selling to male or females. That's not the point. The point is the people that came there expecting nothing are the people that were probably the, the most surprised. And, and that has been a great gift for us. I love it. I mean, just super iconic. Well, I know we have a hard stop here, and I will make sure we can link. Thank you for your time, Brett. What a, what a nice conversation. I appreciate you so much, man. Absolutely. If, if anybody does have any questions, if anybody would like to check us out on our, our, our world premiere of Rose Hill on Saturday, um, you can go to TommyHowellMusic.com and, and get a ticket. I think it's 15 bucks. We're going to have a Q&A, play some music, and, and uh, we'll have some fun. So I hope you all come and join us. Yes, and if you ever come to the Denver area for anything, I'm definitely there. Thank you so much, my friend. We'll be in touch.